I don't come from a design education background and I think the some of the best designers I know and have worked with don't come from design backgrounds either. So, uh, so today we are sitting with Hardik Pandya from Google, not the cricket wave, uh, the designer from Google. I have to explain that to everyone. <laughs> and uh, he, I think he's the fastest designer in terms of his career path and how I've seen him grow. From learning self-learning design and technology from corners of Gujarat to coming to InstaMojo in Bangalore, working with some of the biggest people in the industry and then moving on to some of the biggest teams in Google. And uh, today we're going to learn what his story is and uh, how did he go about it and what we can learn from his journey and especially from his experience in uh, you know, working in design at, from B2B to B2C to various sales of start, uh, startups and companies. First question is obviously how did you get into design? How was that process like? I don't come from a design education background and I think the, some of the best designers I know and have worked with don't come from design backgrounds either. Uh, but I know that now, I didn't know that back then. Um, so I'm from Gujarat, like career options for us were uh, very well defined. Um, okay. I picked the the one that made my parents happy and that made me happy. <laughs> uh, uh, that was going with engineering, right? And I, I, I studied engineering, I did my master's as well. I, I have to say, like, I, I enjoyed it. It's not too, it, it wasn't completely uh, a blind choice. I, I knew what I was get, uh, getting into. Um, but I think uh, towards the end of my engineering, I, I realized that that wasn't the career that I wanted. Mm -hmm. Education, fine. Um, I, it, it made me a better thinker. It made me a better uh, uh, analytical uh, thinker in o overall, right? Um, but I think that's about everything that I wanted from the education. I, didn't know, I wasn't looking for like a profession or, or carry that forward as a, as a way of uh, making a living. Um, so I was looking for alternatives. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I, I did think about some crazy ones, right? Like I wanted to try photography. I wanted to try like uh, filmmaking. Mm. Um, but turned out it turned out that I wasn't uh, good at any of them, and I wasn't ready to make the investment to get good at any of mm. them. So uh, at that time, like uh, uh, web design was uh, one thing that I was actually exploring because I, and it's it started from something very small. I I always wanted a, a website of of my own. Right. For some reason, I don't know why. Uh, it started back in 2006, six, seven, and uh, I bought my domain. Um, and uh, so I, I've I've had hardlypandya.com uh, since last 13, 14 years, right? Wow. So for last 14, 14 years, yeah. And I my my dad uh, used to tell me like, why do you need a domain, right? Like, what are you going right. to do with it? Uh, what's what would a person like you do with a website? Like, right. I don't I don't understand the point, right? And I couldn't explain to him either. I I said I I, I want it, and um, I'll see what I want to do with it later. Um, so yeah, then I started like blogging and like just generally like designing a, like a nice website. Like, I thought if I have a domain, I better do something with it, right? Uh, let me make a website and then share my thoughts and whatever. Now you're in, in engineering college, like right. what amazing thoughts do you have? Like, <laughs> <laughs> what do you have worth sharing that, that, there are, that there are thousands of people waiting to hear from you? Nobody, right? Like so you, I, I was just fooling around with like early blogging and like trying out uh, writing about football and whatever right. interested me at the time. Um, but uh, what happened was, as a side effect, I actually uh, uh, was interested in trying out different blogging platforms. Mm -hmm. And there were a few at the time, like static blogging wasn't a thing back then. So um, Squarespace was, I think, I, I think, super early and it was like, it had like two or three templates and like it was in very early stages, right? Like it's, um, they don't even know what they want to do, that, okay. kind, that kind of a situation. So. Yeah, yeah. I think they they wanted to make it easy for people to build websites, right. uh, but the templates were like very rudimentary. And they, uh, so I started by like picking one up uh, and uh, started like uh, tinkering with it. Like if I if I wanted to change the layout, uh, would I be able to do it? And I was also talking to their support because they they were a paid uh, service back then uh, beyond a month. So I started paying. I, I talked to support like, hey, if I want to make CSS changes, can I do them? They were like, oh yes, but the support is limited. Uh, you can here's how you can try them. So I learned their whole class structure, and wow. like I started editing their themes to make them fit my own needs. Right. But at some point, I realized that this was uh, almost uh, like getting an elephant and changing it to make it look like a horse. And <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay, maybe I should just um, uh, move to a platform that allowed me to actually design things on my own, yeah. right? And I uh, started trying out WordPress and. Uh, and uh, um, I started like uh, changing layouts and like what WordPress was, was and still is way more flexible and allows yeah. you to like directly take control of the source code, right? So that way it, it all started there, right? Learning, like trying out different um, uh, aspects of web design. Uh, and mobile had started, right, at the time. And uh, 
thanks to my parents, I, I actually they uh, managed to uh, make them gift me an iPhone four. Uh, yeah. Make them gift me an iPhone four. <laughs> <laughs> How did you do that? Um, that the secret of making a parent gift honestly, you? like. Uh, I don't know, like what, what does a <laughs> 16, 17, 18 year old do to like get the best phone, right? Throw tantrums. <laughs> um, yeah, throw tantrums and also like I, so I, I, I guess I was good at like selling the value of something that I could do in future with something. <laughs> so I was like, okay, maybe if I get a good phone, I can learn how to like uh, design apps and build stuff right. for it, right? Like maybe, maybe there is that kind of an angle to it. Fine. I got the phone, I, I started exploring the app store. So th this wasn't when I was 17, 18, this was much later, but uh, this was still before my design uh, pivot, right? Uh, so this was while I was doing my masters and um, uh, I was already like blogging for my university. I'd already uh, was helping them with like the design of the blog and things like that. So, um, but the phone thing actually did it for me, right? Like, like when, I, when I started using an iPhone, I started learning uh, about what the app store was and how indie app creators had started putting out these uh, digital products and they were all doing those by themselves right there was not there were no huge teams behind those apps they were like just people like people who were interested in building good software so that actually um, uh, spoke to me in a, in a way that nothing else uh, did at the time which was hey a person basically interested in um, designing and uh, writing code can design an app and put it on the app store and then like thousands of people will use it and then uh, uh, probably even pay for it so that's when I started like sort of uh, uh, really focusing on like, okay, what if I wanted to develop the skill of designing apps? And, and I uh, did some teardowns of like the Twitter client at the time, which was Tweetbot and like okay. a couple, there was there was another Reddit client uh, at the time, which was third party. The, the fact, I mean, the, the sort of insight was that the third party um, sort of indie designers and creators were like really uh, putting a lot of effort into thinking. And they were not constrained by like uh, what the other major companies uh, would be constrained by, right? Yeah. Like your, your branding is like uh, branding team is like sitting on your head, like hey, you can't do this, that, and all. But the indie ones were actually uh, very experimental, right? And they were trying what they were pushing the boundaries of the operating system, what iOS had to give. So that was fascinating. And and uh, I did one of the uh, one or two of uh, uh, small redesigns of the Twitter client at the time and uh, put it up there on my website. I always had the website and. Uh, um, fast forward a few months, uh, I was I kept doing that, and like I had three or four really lame case studies up, you know. <laughs> and um, Akash ended up uh, basically looking at it, and, 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 and Goel, yeah, and all of that happened, right? Like the call with Sampad and uh, getting like the first real design job. Uh -huh. uh, we were talking about something related to Spotify, and uh, he ended up uh, opening my website. Uh, thankfully, I had a link up on my Twitter profile, and he said, "Okay, I think Instamojo is looking for somebody uh, who can do similar work for us." Right. And I honestly had like no idea. I had heard of Instamojo, of course, and I had looked at the website and uh, um, I can definitely confirm that it, it was a company that I actually thought at the time, what if I could, I, I, what if I ever get to work for a company like this, right? They're in Bangalore and Bangalore, seems to, I, I kept hearing about Bangalore all the time, right? Hey, that's where technology is and that's, that's sort of like the hotbed for like uh, uh, people who want to make a career in, in tech. So. That was uh, there was that angle, and yeah. then uh, Goel reached out, and I, I actually honestly, I, I, my first reaction was like, seriously, you you liked it, and uh, you really think that there could be a profession uh, yeah. uh, that actually needs someone to do this twenty four seven, and uh, it was, so it was a very naive point of view, right? Like because I didn't know what a career in design would look like. Honestly, yeah. it was early, super early days for me as well. Um, so, but I went with it. I, I said, okay, let's, uh, uh, what is the next step, right? Uh, and he said, okay, let's talk to Sampad, right? We'll, we'll set up a call uh, this evening. So, right. it, this was all happening on a Monday and Monday evening I had already talked to Sampad and he said, um, come to Bangalore, right? Uh, right? I think, I think we can start. I don't think I have any doubts. Uh, that itself was like a uh, uh, like a red flag, right? Like, what do you mean you don't have doubts? Like, I have doubts. <laughs> so, uh, so I was like, okay. Uh, let me think about it, right? I haven't even like a, a notice of 24 hours is not enough for for such a big change. Yeah. Um, but he said, okay, uh, go back to Ahmedabad later if you have to. But just come here on Wednesday. We need to have you uh, have you here and have you like set up and all of that. I talked it out with my parents. My parents couldn't believe it, right? Like they were they were almost like they, of course parents, right? They they, they were skeptical uh, as as any person who doesn't know what this is uh, would be. So they were like, okay, I, I, are you sure the company is real? Are you sure this is not, um, yeah, yeah, this is not a scam or something or, or um, 
like we have never heard of this company right what do they do can you explain to us like do you mind if i talk to the guy who talked to you right <laughs> uh because i want to make sure like you you're going to bangalore on a new city you've never been to bangalore i want to make sure you you're not going blind right said okay i think it should be fine uh let me at least go there uh i didn't bring shachi with me right and she was like okay you go there figure it out and we'll we'll make we'll decide if we actually are moving or not moving right we were not sure uh so i landed to uh, landed in bangalore on wednesday and uh, never went back basically that was the day <laughs> I, i still remember it, it was march 20th uh yeah. and the call had happened on the 18th sorry the march 18th so the call had happened on the 16th right. so 18th of march uh i moved to bangalore and then never went back so he did it for himself so so it's basically the he is accountable for like how it goes right. you can't complain to us right. uh, we didn't find it for you you're the one who chose right. it you <laughs> were a little bit uh, worried until the first paycheck came okay after that it was like okay i think i think uh, you're going to be fine <laughs> and I, i was talking to the someone yesterday and i i told them that uh, whatever my career is today is is uh, hugely um basically uh, down to how great uh, how great of a team that i i landed up with in insta mojo right and um, who became basically my bangalore family right yeah. i didn't have any friends uh, in bangalore at the time and um, fortunate to be calling all of them all of you guys friends uh, even today so yeah that's that's that was basically the beginnings and uh, had a ton of fun um so i i i distinctly remember what i worked on uh, in my first few days um I remember a meeting that happened with Sampad and Apur when uh, they got me into the room. This is the third day. So first two days no activity. I got my laptop, I set it up and uh, basically I was just sitting there I didn't know what to do or what I was be- uh, I was going to be doing. Right. Um on the third day they they uh, invited me to the room and uh, three of us have basically talked it out, right? Like hey, what is my role going to be? What are, what are they expecting from me? Um so this is like uh, up until that day I was still in a limbo, right? Like I, am I uh, to actually have a job or not yeah. right <laughs> um but uh, yeah i think uh, they were they were very uh, very sort of um, uh, warm and like it was sort of like a soft uh, entry into 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 the role right they were very nice about uh, the expectations and uh, and very gentle with the with with uh, with the timelines and and sort of like uh, the initial uh, ramp up right there was so I, yeah i think the first project i remember was about um, creating the mobile uh, a mobile version of insta mojo what we right. needed to do was uh, the the whole shift to mobile was happening in india and uh, and and you are aware of that right like we we were thinking of, so insta mojo had always been like a web first product at the time right. and we wanted to pivot to mobile and and have something that people could actually use on their phones right. um and uh, i said okay that's uh, the reasonable right like uh, so i basically uh, as a as a naive designer who's who's literally in her, in his third week <laughs> of of his of this new career I went and designed uh, 75 screens i still have the sketch file uh, <laughs> even today so do i i'm never going to delete that um 75 screens worth of uh, all the flows so i basically went and audited the whole uh, uh, web product on right. the on the desktop and and basically ported it over to mobile right, right. um as as somebody who's <laughs> not thinking word <laughs> um so yeah and i had this uh, uh, grand presentation reveal at uh, at the end of i think the two weeks that i took to right. basically do all of that and uh, at the end of that meeting i still remember uh, sampad's reaction was uh, like what the hell <laughs> <laughs> i i think it was something along those lines and it was uh, that basically I, i i was trembling on my feet and i was like i think i'm packing my bags i think <laughs> i think this is it i think this is it uh, i i have been found out <laughs> um but uh, no I, i the the meeting ended and then i think the, i i had a separate conversation with apur where i where he and i talked uh, more critically and more objectively about uh, what was presented and uh, what was actually needed right and um, full credit to him if i didn't have him as like this this uh, guiding force uh, at least in the in in that small organization that we had i would have uh, struggled really hard and i would have been way slower in my sort of uh, ramp up and being effective in a company right so um from that to basically like uh, doing uh, two or three really big projects together it, 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 it then relatively got easier because the you got to know more like you got to know people better and like you got to know your role better right. so yeah uh, eventually like it, it turned into something that uh, something of a of a um uh, relationship framework where you could be extremely honest and like you know right. we used to like uh, mess around all the time right yeah, so yeah. that kind of but 
but uh, the culture aspect was something that always uh, that I always cherish, right? I think I was really uh, able to gel with the team way faster than I had imagined, right? I had never dealt with people other than my friends before. Like you're coming into a new city, you don't even know anyone. This company is new for you, right. and you are in a professional setting, so you probably assume that uh, people have very set expectations, and beyond that, you basically go home and have your live your life. Um, here it was very different, right? Like we were all uh, like a family. We still are, and it it's, it, it was very uh, genial in the way we we sort of uh, did things together and uh, uh, had everyone's back, right? Like we 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 were like each other's safety net, and we were very critical with each other when needed. So that I still sometimes I when I sit and reflect, I I miss that, you know, <laughs> because uh, as you grow into bigger companies like you lose those connections just because uh, the network effect is like uh, is, is pulling you in the other direction and right you are not a person who will give up you know on that like if if your uh, eyesight is set on to solving a problem it's like it doesn't matter like what it takes uh, keep iterating keep pushing at it so uh, is that something that you are aware of and doing purposely or is that how you approach life or like how do you do that where you don't let these failures defeat you and you know, pull you back uh, yeah, so I, I had a different outlook, of course, back then. Back then, I did that because I had no choice. I basically it was that or going back, and uh, uh, desperation pushes people to do crazy things, right? And and uh, do things in a crazy way. I, I think, uh, um, in all seriousness, I, I I took the opportunity very seriously. I I uh, was financially rewarded uh, uh, more than I ever imagined I would be when I was starting out a new career, right? I wasn't uh, a designer before I had that. The, the the title of a designer right, right. Um, so I took it very seriously I uh, I knew what was at stake uh, it was about making a living and I was already married at the time uh, it, it was serious right so um, I had no other option but to work hard and um, also I think what helped was the talented people that were there um, I think talking to uh, you or Akash or Apoor or uh, Sampad um, a couple of other folks at the time like I realized that all of us were uh, there from very diverse backgrounds like we we all came from different parts of the country and uh, had done it or or were in the process of doing it right so i basically had no excuse to to not uh, do it or not work hard or not get better yeah. uh, and it rubs off on you right that's the culture everybody um, uh, came from like re reasonably middle class backgrounds we were not and none of us were well off we were all trying to make our name our own names right like we were all uh, a team and in it together. So when you are in that kind of a healthy environment, uh, you cannot uh, not work hard, mm -hmm. right? It's basically just uh, by 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 the virtue of swimming in a fast river, you are right. your your velocity increases and uh, your quality of the output also increases. So I, I saw it as as more of a university. I draw a parallel with like a university, right? If right. you if you are in a great university, you, the other students are working hard. You cannot slack up, right? right. It, right. it just it just you, it wouldn't be. Exactly, and and that's a good thing. I think uh, that's how good companies hire good people, and good people hire good other other good people, right? right. So, uh, and and I, I remember that. I think uh, Sampad had mentioned that uh, hiring they they always took hiring very seriously, right? And uh, um, I'm really thankful that they saw something on a, on a phone call, which which is the risk that he took, right? Um, uh, because it was only you before that, right? And then there was no there were no I think there was Namrata and and yeah. you, right? Namrata just joined. I think just before you. Yeah, um, but I think uh, that 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 was the part that 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 leap of faith that he took in uh, by by blindly inviting me to the uh, to the table and like just giving me the job, right? And yeah. not even a trial period, nothing, just just start, right? Yeah. And and we'll figure it out. Um, that coupled with my willingness to sort of uh, make it work right. any any way possible, uh, basically just worked out, I guess, for uh, for me at least and and the company to a certain extent. Yeah. Retroactively, I can say now that uh, uh, the main main learning was how to focus on the right things, uh, how to how to identify the real challenges that the organization faces, and oftentimes uh, the challenges are not the ones that people talk about. Like there are challenges that people often don't articulate well, um, and uh, it's our job as like sort of the guardians of the product that to 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 uncover them and and, and to be able to. Um, uh, document them and share them out, and then just get a wider uh, 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 sort of stakeholder buy-in, right? Like wider buy-in about, hey, are, are we focusing on the right things? Because startups have um, uh, limited time, limited resources, uh, which means focusing is of the utmost importance. Uh, which is which tells us as designers that we cannot be uh, almost wasting time on uh, things that are of uh, 
that, that are of not of high value or not of high prioritization. So I think prioritization is something that I learned a little bit at the time, right? Like how do you, uh, uh, for example, like Instamojo was a huge product, and uh, I remember days when I when we were sitting with Apoor and figuring out which which other sections that we want to focus on first, right? Which other um, uh, and and now like um, uh, today, if I if I reflect on it. I have a much uh, much more mature framework of of uh, looking at that and articulating that right if you if your product consists of um, n number of user journeys the way you break it down is um, design like a frequency against journeys mm -hmm. graph and figure out where where your what are your most frequent journeys right basically uh, how do you 80 20 uh, uh, out of that and figure out what journeys you want to like spend your most amount of time on and prioritize first and then the other and and we see that all the time in other products as well like uh, major revamps don't happen uh, all at once they right. gradually uh, get shipped and like important features get rolled out first and then everything else follows so that was something that i i, I think i learned a little bit at the time and, and could have done more but again first job so i was um, happy with what i was learning right Collaboration is something I learned. I think um, and I, I, I'm glad that I was open to always listening and getting feedback. Uh, also, by the virtue of me being new to the team, I, I, I always would naturally listen more uh, um, because people had more context and like they knew more about the product. So the market that we operated in was was something that was not to be taken granted uh, for. And, and uh, it basically, uh, we could say it was enterprisey more so than consumerish. I, 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 you could argue either way, but uh, I think it was more about the supply, like understanding the needs for of the supply side, right? And I, I found it very difficult in the beginning. About uh, it's hard to empathize with somebody whose life and whose work you don't really uh, understand really well, right? And which was the case in the beginning. Uh, so. One thing I uh, wish I had done more was uh, spend uh, more time you and I understanding and like basically just doing the the knowledge dump uh, uh, and and grasping what you already knew at the time and I I, I think it was also like you you as a designer when you as a designer join a new company you, you focus more on the output yeah. than 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 the depth you focus more on the breadth of things that you can show uh, instead of the depth and uh, that's that's fine. I think you're you're just covering up your insecurities at the time, and you're you're um, trying to like show that you're making an effort, uh, which is why you spend less time thinking, more time doing. Um, so, um, but actually, that did uh, something good for uh, for uh, the product and me and us was that uh, um, I started sort of in the in the uh, in the vein of being a visual designer and uh, understood that we would probably need to like modernize the website and then uh, there was like a uh, it, it seemed like a low hanging fruit at the time so I, I started like thinking about okay what if what is our color palette what should be our ui language uh, and what, what are the components going to look like uh, if we were to modernize this right and uh, uh, we had that system and and i uh, i was surprised that we kept using it for such a long time um, even after I had left right like it was long still going on for a long time yeah until recently before just right before you left you uh, get another the basics, it still uses the structures we created right. back then in conference what happened next then what, what followed up in Stamuzu basically I understood the, the design uh, scene in Bangalore a little better I had uh, made a lot of friends outside in Stamuzu by that time uh, and uh, I, I, I always wanted to uh, see what else is out there right yeah. and I, I was considering uh, slightly larger opportunities at the time. What if? Uh, and I was thinking about how um, I would scale uh, my career going forward. And uh, at that time, I had heard of Sunit Singh a lot, right? And uh, I reached out to him. We had like a meeting, and uh, at the time, he was setting up his own uh, sort of a thing he, uh, uh, after a clear trip. And I reached out, and we did the interviews, and uh, it all worked out well. So at that time, basically, my thinking was. Uh, because I always looked up to Sunid and I still do and uh, he gave me sort of like a green light that he, I, I was worthy of working with him. Right. I It almost felt um, natural for me to just take up the opportunity, right? right? And uh, it was something new, so it was exciting um, at, uh, as well. Um, so yeah, Design Capital happened. Uh, basically, Design Capital uh, was also set up in a way that you would get to work with uh, more than one company right and they had like a slew of um, clients that were really well known in the industry and I the structure was uh, that we would form like a core team and uh, instead of uh, focusing all our time on a certain company as as their employees would you would basically uh, time shift and like give split your time between two or three different clients 
uh, and help out more number of teams, right? The exciting part for me in that was that uh, I would be able to context switch uh, to different problems and right. I would I would basically expand uh, uh, on my understanding of uh, how different industries worked. And that was also my way of uh, sort of um, um, amplifying uh, impact or like yeah, my, my basically understanding of um, different companies and different sized teams, right? right? Like for example, some of the clients were small, tiny coming up, they were like, uh, uh, zero to one products and they were still uh, building their MVPs and then we had like really mature clients like Ola, right, that, that they already had their products that there was a uh, product market fit and they were uh, doing great as businesses already. So challenges were very different and uh, that's what excited me a lot, right. And uh, it would also expose me to more people, more designers and uh, uh, the parallel track of like sort of also building brand with more people right, and, right. and uh, exposing yourself to um, uh, more uh, number of product managers and more diverse uh, teams, right? So it looked like it was ticking all the boxes at the time right. and, and I, I took that. So yeah, that, that went on for like I think close to two years. Uh, right. I had a lot of fun, um, a lot of challenges, a lot of uh, headaches and heartaches. Uh, these companies uh, are not easy. Right. Uh, the challenges were not easy. Um, and what challenges were you facing, like especially the hard burning when work was doing? Like yeah, so I think uh, it's uh, and it's, this speaks to like a little bit of a little bit to the the, the whole consulting model, right? And then right. to the whole freelancing uh, the aspect uh, freelancing aspect of uh, uh, shared ownership or like um, uh, peripheral ownership, that, uh, as we used to see it as, right? So. You're not part of the team. You you would have like great ideas and uh, you can present them. I, I used to spend a lot of time in Ola office. Um, I was pretty much like a part of their own team, right? I never saw myself as an outsider. That's not how, how I worked. And uh, there was a lot of reciprocation with similar sort of cadence as well. So it was a lot of fun. But when time came to push decisions and then push uh, projects forward, um, you would always see a little bit of a, uh, of a hurdle or a challenge uh, getting uh, things over the uh, over the edge right and uh, that was largely because of our the, the, the nature of relationship that we had with them right. and that's natural I think that's uh, that's very human uh, it happens in consulting all the time uh, that uh, the moment that started showing up uh, it made harder to push products uh, forward and push experiences forward and push uh, push out good work um, that's when I started started to like uh, uh, think about uh, this thing very seriously, right? Like whether I want to keep pursuing this or whether I really uh, have exhausted like what I could get from this kind of a model and should I now go back to the more of a more of a, a direct ownership of the product, right? I, I had a lot of um, uh, good people that I worked with in Ola and uh, a couple of other startups. So. Uh, the learning was great, right? That was, that was the first uh, multi-million uh, user product that I had, right. uh, I had worked on at the time and uh, the challenges of an ops heavy businesses are crazy as you now know, right? right. Uh, yeah. uh, executing things on ground is, is incredibly hard, right. setting the right expectations with the consumer right. um, and like uh, it, it, I, I, had a, I had a funny parallel at the time. So Airbnb was coming up big, uh, Ola Uber were like a thing, right? Swiggy was a thing. Um, it almost it went like this, right? Like if you're designing a product on a screen, uh, but the product, the experience delivery or the delivery of the product uh, happens in an offline world, you are not designing the product at all. You are basically right. designing a, a shop that sells you something that is going to get delivered via a separate channel. So right. you cannot almost you cannot uh, you don't have a full understanding of the product if if if, uh, if the only thing you think about is the app or or the gateway to the access to the product, yeah. right? Yeah. These things are access to the product. The product yeah. is not the app. The product is the stay that that somebody would have in a, in an in an Airbnb or right. uh, or a ride that somebody would have. Yeah. So I think it's a means to an end. Basically. Exactly. Yeah. It's it, it's it's almost like saying uh, Paytm is the product, but uh, what you buy is coffee, right? So coffee right. is the product. I mean, Paytm yeah. is just a way to get coffee. Yeah. Um, so I, that internalizing that kind of a thinking, right? Like that that uh, we should worry about the ride experience as well, not just how the person books it. Uh, the booking takes three seconds, five seconds, right? Uh, or um, or uh, near silk board uh, ten minutes, right. but uh, but it's it's everything afterwards that right. that 
that is what basically defines what a good experience is and that's what uh, that's where you need to put a lot of effort as a company uh, to make that better right is your car coming in the right right condition is is the does the driver have uh, full gas does he uh, request you to like go fill up gas once you have sat inside right like is is it is it right ready right like when the car comes to you is it right ready uh, is the ac on and is are the seats like properly uh, drawn out right so those details started mattering a lot because like Uber was coming up big. You need to cre- you needed to create a differentiator in the in the market, and the differentiation is not the app; it's it's the service. Um, so it's 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 the right, the right experience, and uh, so we started to focus on that a lot. And that kind of a pivot, I I lived through that pivot as it was happening in the company, and it was fascinating to see people uh, opening up to this new sh- uh, new understanding. Right, that that uh, it's not just the app, but uh, everything after. Uh, up until the person rates or doesn't rate right all of that is basically that's when you actually close the loop that's when you that's when the that's when the product uh, delivery ends right like right, when the person leaves the cab so everything uh, you have to own everything you can you cannot say that uh, the moment i matched you with a driver my job as ola is done now it's up to the driver to deliver the experience no that's that's basically that's that's not uh, yeah exactly so so that was a lot of fun uh, and uh, then play happened ola play happened uh, again very new space very new product what uh, ola play about this perfect uh, yeah so ola play uh, so the the thinking behind that was uh, how do how would ola make the ride experience more enjoyable uh, considering most of the rides happened in the six or seven major cities in india which were full of traffic and at any given time and most of them were commuters uh, who would uh, often take rides in a very uh predefined like sort of uh, uh, fixed endpoints right yeah, it so it gets monotonous and it is yeah. sometimes people uh, people mostly prefer to sleep but sometimes they would want to like um, just get entertained or like relaxed in a cab environment right so we wanted to force like a um, uh, and when i say we like i i got engaged in it much later but the team there wanted to create an experience where it would give you like a soothing experience like the moment you entered a cab you they wanted you to get isolated from like the chaos outside mm-hmm. and how do you sort of then have this cab by yourself and have a little bit of an ownership on on the kind of experience you will have so how do you uh, put personalization into into the picture or how do you put uh, relaxation into the picture so all these uh, sort of uh, points of views like came together and and uh, then this this idea was sort of um, um being considered within the company and uh, then it, it was trialed and like it uh, resulted in like really good uh, customer satisfaction and and there was like a research study and all of that happened so then it then the whole sort of new spin off organization um uh, was created and the the whole play team right and right. it grew to be extremely large like 500 person team i think at right. at, at that speed yeah which one of the prime products yeah it is um, yeah and and i can't uh, i i don't really have like context uh, of what they are doing recently uh, or or lately what they have been doing but at the time it was uh, it was uh, really fun from the inside and and it seemed to be generating a lot of buzz outside as well uh, so so yeah that was that was uh, a lot of fun that that whole uh, a uh, journey of uh, thinking of an experience and then actually delivering it and uh, there is a supply side to it right like where would you put your car driver device where would you put a customer device what's the right orientation uh, what's the right casing for it what is the charging amount like how do you handle all the uh, all the data delivery uh, because it, they were all we were putting videos and songs and it, it, the drivers on the road all day right like how do you ensure that it's not buffering 80% of the time uh, when you actually need need it the most right so there was some clever engineering involved a lot of thinking went behind it to ensure low latency and like no buffering and all of that so um all in all was super satisfied with like how um uh, how intentional we were about uh, delivering a good experience so yeah that that contributed a lot to my understanding of ops heavy businesses right, right. and then i said never again <laughs> <laughs> never again oh. no. in your process of growing as a designer it uh, from a story it sounds like people were extremely important Yeah. Right. Uh, you mentioned the Uber. You mentioned Dalen. Then Sumper. Then working with Google. And then working with Sneet Singh. And then uh, you know now working with phenomenal people at Google, mm. from engineering to design to product. Like Google has endless list of phenomenal people people you can access and work with. Why are people so important in your career? And what makes you find? How do you find these people? How do you connect with these people? You also spoke about just reaching out and connecting with mm. folks. And how does one reach out? You know. So I read this uh, really beautiful line somewhere, which said. Uh, people don't join products or companies they join other people right right and uh, something about that 
resonated true with me because if I look back at InstaMojo, that was the same case, right? I joined people who trusted me when I was a nobody, right? And and uh, then they elevated me and they sort of helped me uh, have a career, right? So that was something so there was something so beautiful about it, right? It's it's and I, as I said again, right? Um, problems will always be there. It's uh, it's about uh, it's all about the journey and it's all about who you are having that journey with, who you get to share an office with. Because, and we, we, we uh, used to discuss this all the time, right? We spend eight, 10, 12, 14 hours in, uh, in the workplace. Right. It better be fun and it better right. be enjoyable, respectful, um, yet um, uh, full of accountability and, and uh, um, you know, candor, right? So if you have that, don't let it go. And I still, Oftentimes, uh, when Apoorva and I have a discussion, right, we, I, I tell him all the time, right, I want to be able to again work with you at some point in my life, or you, or Akash, right? I, I would love to have that uh, that uh, camaraderie again, right? And then, uh, which is which is then only goes to re it goes to reinforce uh, the same uh, belief that like if you find great people, don't let them go. Right. And which is why you see like big leaders moving uh, companies, they take their teams with them because yeah, likely, yeah. because the shared understanding and the and the and the comfort just makes things easier for everyone involved, right? So that that uh, established trust is so valuable that that's exactly what uh, uh, people actually look and acquire and acquire hire, right? All the time. So people are basically going to make uh, someone's career nothing else right i don't think products will because there is no product without people right, right. so yeah, you can say you shipped something great but you shipped something great with other people who actually helped you ship something great uh, work is as good as the work of people around you right. so choose the people who you respect and who do great work so that your work gets elevated as a byproduct right. uh, and uh, that's the only way to like have a career. I would say not even build a great one. It's just basically if you if you are, if you're stuck with bad people, I guess. Uh, um, I mean, uh, of course, like uh, being stuck with bad people is a is your own point of view. You yeah. could be bad for someone as well. <laughs> but uh, but relatively speaking, like if you are stuck with people who you don't enjoy working with, um, that's the biggest red flag, I guess. Like that, you should just. Uh, then start uh, to thinking of moving somewhere else. So, and it's the same in search as well, right? I, I am uh, extremely satisfied every single day. I go home thinking I was respected today. I respected other people. There was a lot of uh, great brainstorm. We went hard at the problem. It was fun. And uh, I think in a complex world full of uh, VUCA, I think fun is basically the only thing you should maximize for every, every single day. It's the only thing you should maximize for because you will ship things, you will fail, everybody is going to fail uh, at some point in time, right? Uh, we all have ambitions, but fun is basically the thing that you, like you're, you, you're no longer competing, you're in it for the same cause, right? Like you're all together, don't try to um, like go at it alone or like go at it uh, against other people. It's, it's all about doing things together. And that's the beauty in it and yeah that's so which is why like people are definitely important and uh, uh, which is why i would recommend highly that you study the people who you are going to be working with mm -hmm. and optimize for that when you look at a new opportunity right. not right. how big the product is or how uh, great the company is yeah, after, I, uh, you were talking to google when, yeah namrata had namrata was there and uh, i was uh, so of course, uh, uh, like every other designer, I wanted to end up in uh, one of the big five companies, right? right. Uh, 